What do you do if your tenant gets a dog? That's the topic of today's show. Let's dive in. Hey, real estate investors. Welcome to another episode of the Ask James Wise Show. The Ask James Wise Show here on Holton Wise TV. This is your show. This is the show where you guys send us the questions and we do our very best to answer them for you. Now, today's topic of discussion, what do you do if your tenant gets a dog? Man, that is uh, something that I hear from a lot of folks. And, um, well, guys, I have kind of a interesting perspective on this. I know a lot of people are out there and they're telling you that you should write your leases saying no pets, pets cause damage, don't do pets. I don't agree with that. As a matter of fact, I go the opposite way. I go the way of if you can't beat them, join them. I think that you should offer your tenants the ability to get pets. And this is why. You can't necessarily, or you shouldn't at least, put clauses in your leases that are incredibly hard to enforce or incredibly costly to enforce. What do I mean by that specifically? Will be hard to enforce. Let's take the situation where you have a rental property, you've put a clause in your lease saying that, hey, if you get a pet, you know, you're gonna get booted. Is that really the smartest play from a profit and loss perspective? Now, as we all know, evictions evictions cost thousands of dollars, guys. They're incredibly expensive. If you have never done an eviction or if you're not familiar with how much evictions actually cost, I want you guys to check out episode 21 of the Tenants from Hell show. I went ahead and I put a link to that in the show notes below. That's where my team, we evicted some tenants and we actually broke down all of the costs associated with that eviction. You know, on the low end, you're looking at a couple grand just when you worry about legal fees and then the vacant unit. And then on the high end, it can get above $10,000 depending on what type of damage was done to the unit. Um, So that's a good look at the costs uh, in an extreme example. But just in any example, you're already going to have those costs, guys. And I don't think it's ever a good idea for you guys to create artificial turnover out there. Artificial turnover is our biggest return killer. You know, in the rental game, the name of the game, guys, it's about rental income checks, income stream coming in. You should never be in a hurry to remove an incoming income stream and replace it with a ton of costs, more specifically turnover costs. Not to mention evictions for a lease violation, a minor lease violation, like bringing in a dog, those are incredibly hard to win. They are not simple cut and dry evictions. Like a non-payment of rent eviction, that is fairly simple and easy. Even though sometimes you could run into a little bit of delays and hassle, but for the most part, if you have a tenant on a lease and they don't pay rent, you could pretty much chalk that up as a win no matter what. Whereas this type of an eviction, it's very, very difficult. So you have to look your tenant in the eye and you have to, if they violate your lease term, you have to know that you're willing to spend thousands of dollars to enforce that if they don't necessarily agree with you. Because you can't tell them, hey, it's against the lease, get that dog out of there, and then they call your bluff and they don't get the dog out of there, then you just back down. You don't want to do that. If you do that, you're going to lose credibility. They know they can walk all over you. You give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. So that's why I say if you can't beat them, join them. What you want to do is only put clauses in your lease to protect your income streams coming in. Don't put things in your leases that are going to be hard to enforce or that you would not be willing to spend thousands of dollars enforcing. So what can you do to join them? Well, I say you go ahead and allow people to get cats or dogs, and we're talking single-family homes or duplexes here. I say you go ahead and allow that. Now, I don't think you should allow it for large apartment buildings. Then it's worth 
uh, having to spend that money to a victim if they don't agree. Because if you do it in a large apartment building, that will prevent rental income checks from coming in. Because you take a big dog in like a 25-unit apartment building, you're going to have 24 other tenants that are pissed off and thinking about moving out because that dog's making noise. But if we are talking like a single-family home or something, I say you just join them, let them Go ahead and have their pets. The benefits are going to be great. Number one, you're going to get a wider tenant base. So you're probably going to have lower vacancy time and you're going to be able to increase that rent since more people are going to be interested in your asset. And then number two, you're going to be able to charge additional money. I'm talking pet fees, pet rent, pet deposits. You know, truth be told, if you have a responsible tenant that's not going to mess your property up too much, the addition of their pet doesn't really do too much additional damage, guys. If you got yourself a savage, horrible tenant, whether or not they got a pet, it doesn't matter. They're still going to screw your apartment up. If you have a responsible tenant, whether or not they have a pet doesn't really matter. They're not going to screw up your house, right? That's not how it works. In addition to those benefits, what you can do is you can set yourself up to ensure that your property is hardened in a way that will prevent additional pet damages from happening. As a matter of fact, I made a video that is also in the Ask James Y series. That is episode 24, Five Ways to Bulletproof Your Rental Property, Property Management Best Practices, Five Ways to Bulletproof Your Rental Property. I got a link to that in the show notes below as well, guys. I went over five ways that you can harden your properties so you can reduce your turnover costs. And one of the big items in there, and this is the most important when it comes to do with pets and turnovers, is the flooring. Don't put in things like carpet that you're going to constantly need to replace. Instead, you want to refinish any existing hardwoods and then put a clear coat over them so the liquids don't seep in. Or you can use cheap but durable flooring products like vinyl. That will keep your costs low. That will reduce the amount of damage that pets can potentially do to your properties. That's it, guys. That is what you need to do when your tenant gets a dog. If you have any other questions about real estate investing, let my team know. Just drop them in the comments below. If the question, what's my beak, so to speak, my team, we will make an episode just like this one answering your question. We are all about providing you guys education and allowing you to be the best real estate investors you can be on your own or if you want my team's assistance in helping you invest in real estate just go ahead and click in the show notes below and sign up for our daily email list and we will send you an email every day with an investment opportunity as always i'm james wise with holton wise and this is real estate investing made easy <laughs>